What's going on YouTube, Geosnoid here. In today's video, we're discussing about why you should restart your iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch right now. It's important to do it and we're going to get into why. This video is brought to you by Tenorshare Reboot, a software that allows you to repair a broken iPhone that is no longer booting, but it can also allow you to downgrade from iOS 18 beta if you don't like the beta and you want to go back to iOS 17. Definitely check it out in the link below, a free trial is available. So the biggest reason why you should restart your phone from time to time, and you should do it right now, because I'm pretty sure you haven't in a long time, is malware. Yes, iOS malware is indeed real. Many people believe that iOS malware doesn't exist, that Apple computers and Apple phones don't get malware. That's something for Windows, that's something for Android people, right? Well, it turns out it isn't, and the cases of iOS malware have indeed increased in the past couple of years. They got Trojans and Adware and ransomware and various sophisticated attacks. Now, you may think, well, I'm careful enough that I don't download applications from third-party app stores and I'm actually careful what websites I use. I'm going to tell you that there is malware on iOS that requires zero user intervention. Zero clicks, zero application installs, you just get a message or an email or really nothing and your phone gets infected. Now, I'm not trying to scare anybody into believing that oh you're going to get hacked in the next couple of seconds. However, actual malware is completely open source and even for the most recent iOS versions. Take C shell for example. Now this is at its core a security framework and it's not intended for malware or for you know malicious use. However it is in here to demonstrate how you can actually create pretty powerful malware on iOS by just taking advantage of some minor stuff. For example Troll store, something that many people use. And I talked in detail about it, how it works and what your device may actually encounter if you do get this installed. But in a nutshell, once you are infected with this, the attacker can have access to everything on your device, including your messages, your calendar, your contacts, your photos, your bank account, anything from the device is now in the possession of the attacker. And this is a completely open source tool. Anybody can download it, modify it around a little bit and distribute it as malware. This is not even the only case. If you think about it, just a quick search shows that there's a lot of iOS malware and the only way to stay safe would be to periodically restart your device. Let's take this example over here from Tom's Guide. First ever iOS Trojan discovered, it's stealing facial recognition data to break into bank accounts. You'd think iOS devices are secure and this is only happening on Android, but the Android attackers that developed this kind of malware for Android apparently ported it to iOS as well, because why would they leave us behind, right? And now you can actually get this kind of malware even on iOS. And to make matters even worse, they used Apple TestFlight in order to distribute the malware. For those of you who are unaware, TestFlight is a program from Apple that allows you to submit as a developer applications and have people try them out before they reach the App Store, like beta testers for your own app. So for example, Facebook can issue a TestFlight version of their new app before they release the update to the App Store and it could be a beta tester. And the attackers used exactly the TestFlight program in order to distribute facial recognition data extracting malware. Definitely not good. There is also the Pegasus spyware that was a pretty big scare a couple of years ago and this one worked at that time on the latest version and it could read text messages and emails, access the microphone and camera, listen up on your phone conversations, record your password. It could do a lot of damage. So if you are indeed caught up in one of these, it's not great. Now, yes, indeed, malware on iOS doesn't usually target the random people on the street that have a phone. It's usually targeted at somebody who is a political figure or, I don't know, in an important position in a the company. They usually are targeted targeted attacks. However, not all of them are, and with malware essentially being open source, like the Seashell project over here, which can definitely be weaponized, you could actually encounter malware much more often than you would believe. And just take a look at the security content of iOS 17.5, a recent iOS version over here. There are several vulnerabilities patched over here that could definitely be exploited for that purpose. Now, if you go ahead in here, you would have at first a couple of kernel vulnerabilities, which are pretty bad to begin with. Then you have mail vulnerabilities. So an attacker with physical access may be able to leak mail accounts. A maliciously crafted email may be able to initiate FaceTime calls without user authorization. And if you scroll all the way down in here, here, for example, you have WebKit vulnerabilities. This is bad because WebKit is what powers Safari. So every time you go on a website in Safari, when you search something, WebKit is active in the background doing all the work. Every time you open a web page in an application, maybe an about page, maybe an account creation page, whatever, WebKit is active. And there are tons 
of WebKit vulnerabilities around, and these could definitely be used for various nefarious things. There's a WebKit vulnerability patched in 17.5 that says processing web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. So this could essentially be used to run attacker's code on your device. At that point, if they chain it together with other exploits, your device could be completely compromised and you wouldn't even know it. You wouldn't even get a notification. Then we have another WebKit vulnerability. A maliciously crafted web page may be able to fingerprint the user. So essentially tracking you. Processing a maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution once again. And there are a lot of this. You can actually see there are quite a lot of WebKit vulnerabilities only in this version alone. But every single major iOS version that Apple releases, and once the security content is out, you can see a lot of WebKit vulnerabilities in there. So these all can be used by an attacker. So what can you do is to at least restart your phone from time to time. Because there is something called persistence in memory. So once malware gets to your device, for example, by clicking on a link that you shouldn't have clicked on, or opening a malicious application, or even receiving a mail that was infected and it used a zero-click attack on your device, that malware stays in the memory. And as long as you do not reboot the phone, that malware can remain in the memory. Now, once you reboot your phone, the phone's memory gets cleared out and everything, including the malware, gets terminated. So they would have to reinfect your device, re-trigger the malware in order to infect you again after a reboot. There is indeed malware that can be persistent even after a reboot, but those are extremely rare and far between. Most types of malware will be cleared out once you reboot the phone. That's why it's a great idea to always reboot your phone at least once a week. It helps the performance, and we're going to talk about that in another video, but it also helps prevent malware, because the illusion that malware doesn't exist on iOS and macOS is just that, an illusion. You can definitely be infected, and you should restart your phone just in case. Thank you for watching, I am Gio Snow. Till the next time, subscribe to stay updated, and peace out.